Oh, hello and happy Friday, everyone. Uh, I hope the Chaos Chorus out there is having a wonderful Friday, getting ready for your weekends. Um, I am, of course, Tommy uh, at Imperator Pengu, your MC today. And as always, on this uh, Friday afternoon, we will be playing Eclipse, an Urban Shadows uh, campaign. Uh, a political urban fantasy game set in the Powered by the Apocalypse system. Um, as always, uh, Eclipse is set in a modern yet alternative Los Angeles, uh, where the supernatural exists alongside uh, as normal as Los Angeles gets. Our agenda, as always, will be to make the city feel political and dark, keep the characters' lives out of control, uh, and involving and to play to find out what happens. So why don't we go around uh, our cast and crew, as always, remind us of who you're playing uh, and your playbook, um, since I know we have a few uh, people new to the system here, uh, new to the show. Um, why don't we go over uh, to the man with the do, uh, Don. Hi, uh, I'm Don, and I am playing Octavius Man or Octo Man. Uh, Octo is—he's uh, a lot of things, but his playbook is the Vessel. So he is the flesh golem crafted from the eight dead husbands and wives of a woman named Mandy. That's Octo. He's having a good time. He's in a movie. Uh, yes, uh, he is the, uh, and he's been, uh, um, he's been compared to a number of people <laughs> in regards to his acting. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on, Ray. Uh, hey, I'm Ray. I play Ida June, who is the playbook The Oracle. Uh, she is on this set as a hired spiritual advisor as uh joe once put it and uh she's trying to trying to keep the peace with all the spirits i i suppose mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keeping the peace with the spirits and you know who's keeping the peace in la it's eden core and uh and josh over here <laughs> it it is true. That is that is what is said about me most often is, and and even called most often is, the many charitable uh, avenues and the fact that they keep the peace, uh, or pieces, or they keep people resting in peace. It's it's complicated. It's very complicated. Uh, my name is Joshua, and I will be playing Auden Thornhart, who is uh, here to smooth everything over and let everyone get back to the LA that we know, that we love, and most importantly, that is firmly under my thumb. That's me. I am playing the immortal. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, and uh, perhaps the person with the sort of, the, I would say, the, the least uh, um, control over the city and what's going on here, uh, Lydia. I have a lot of control if you need a ride. But other than that, not much. Um, I'm Lydia. I play Juniper Perry. She is uh, playing the Aware playbook. She'll she'll drive you where you need to go if you call an Uber. She will also deliver your food if you need Uber Eats as well. So pretty handy in this big game. Indeed, indeed. Um, and definitely someone to have handy for dealing with spooks, uh, Charlie. Hello, I'm playing Cassie Adele. She is a, a monster hunter of sorts, although right now she's making deals with the devil to try and save Ida from another devil. And there's a lot of dead bodies around and it might be a fox thing. Or maybe another devil, because let's throw that out there. But she does have a shotgun, and we found out last episode that it works real good. <laughs> it does work real good. And the man just trying to get his movie made, all he wants is this movie to be made, Trav. <laughs> 
Peace is possible in our lifetime. Uh, war is over if you want it. Uh, but we don't want it, apparently, here in uh, the hazy uh, evening in Los Angeles, where I am playing uh, J. Francis Rebane, Joe to his friends, who, of course, has directed uh, enough movies to get a decent royalty check, but uh, uh, apparently he can't finish this one, which is a dangerous adaptation of rare esoteric literature. And he's a scholar. The scholar is his playbook, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing. It's Hollywood, baby. Action. It is. Roll it. It is Hollywood indeed. And there is action to be had aplenty. Um, let's see. As always, before we get into the game, um, we love to thank our, uh, our sponsors. Um, starting off with uh, Helmgast for bringing us I Am Pilgrim uh, on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern here on this channel. It is an actual play of their modern horror tabletop RPG, Cult Divinity Lost. Um, I mean, if you just if you if you just want to see a game that fills you with existential dread, um, you know, for 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 you know, two and a half three hours every week, I strongly recommend it. It will keep you on the edge of your seat. Um, on Thursdays at six p.m. Eastern, uh, join us for Star Trek Adventures, uh, brought to us by Mo Diffius. Uh, Producers of other games like Tales from the Loop, one of my personal favorites, um, Dishonored, and many others. Live long and prosper. And finally, uh, uh, but most, uh, and you know, sort of our constant companion, World Anvil, home to your favorite worlds and lore. Check out the Eclipse World Anvil, where the final of the faction articles have gone up today learn more about the different factions vying for power within the city of la in our eclipse world uh today um world anvil a great tool for writers world builders gms and players um and definitely as always before uh getting into game i always like to remind our uh, our chaos chorus here um to take care of yourselves first um, this may be a urban fantasy game taking place on screen in our heads, um, but there may be times where situations seem very much real, and it is okay to step away from the stream if you need to. We will be here when you get back. So, why don't we get into game? Last session, many of you spoke with the seemingly semi- Mm, resurrected corpse um, of one Melandra Duhaney, the most recent victim of the Pate Killer. Thanks to a power that none of you knew Auden Thornhart had, um, you asked it a few questions in regards to how she died um, and descriptions of her killer. Um, she mentioned a, uh, a young uh, a young man um, dressed well who told her that it wasn't personal uh, before promptly ripping her chest open and uh, eating her liver. Um, your conversation was quickly brought to a, your investigation was quickly brought to a halt as the earth began to tremble once again, an earthquake that has become familiar in the city of LA uh, though this time seemingly uh, breaking open the earth and releasing strange, shadowy beasts uh, into L.A. Um, across uh, down south of you uh, in a uh, production trailer, Joe Francis Rabane was trying to get his schedule back underway, make sure everything was going smoothly, call people he needed to call when this earthquake hit. Um, and he was nearly nearly had his throat torn out by one of these shadowy beasts, but suddenly saved by a, a woman uh, named Mandy, who was looking for their, their lead, uh, Octo, calling uh, him uh, hers, her property. Um, Joe sort of managed to mm, buy time, seemingly, uh, by ending last session by crashing the car, her car, a Corvette, uh, into something. We'll see. We haven't seen quite yet. 
Meanwhile, back at the house, uh, the rest of you found the police officers at the scene of the crime, seemingly having been um, taken, uh, uh, several of them dead from the shadowy beast, one detective still alive, though barely. Um, you managed to fend off the shadowy beast, each of you, um, using your uh, abilities and powers to, the, to stop them. Um, though the detective seemed nearly gone, but thanks to a deal brokered by Auden with his, uh, with management, we'll say, um, the detective's life was extended, so to speak. The sound of police sirens fill the air, fills the air in Los Angeles as news agencies rush to uncover exactly what happened at 8.03 p.m. today. Reports of hordes of wild dogs, speculations of a Hollywood stunt gone wrong, and the claims by conspiracy theorists of a mass hallucination caused by some sort of government experiment with biological weapons uh, floods social media. A few forums buried deep in the reaches of the internet tell a different story, though. A narrative of beasts from hell. Joe, your head pounds. You are disoriented. You can feel the whiplash of the crash, and you gasp for air. The Corvette that Mandy was driving has plowed straight into a telephone pole after you hijacked the steering wheel. Now, you rolled an eight on your mislead distract trick roll last week. So you currently have a decision to make. If you pull up the basic moves sheets, uh, you can see that there's a list of options to choose from. On a seven to nine, you get to pick two from the list. For our audience, the list is you create an opportunity, you expose a weakness or flaw, you confuse them for some time, or you avoid further entanglements. Joe, what would you like as your choices? Um, the point is to keep shooting, to get the next shot, to keep it moving. Uh, creating an opportunity would be nice, but I want to avoid further entanglement. I want to get out of this car. I want to get to Octo and Ida, and I want to survive the night, and I want to get to the next setup and get the next shot by any means necessary. So I want to avoid further entanglement. All right. You have one more option you can choose from that list on the 7 to 9. Oh, well, then I want to create an opportunity. Okay. So, Mandy is out cold. And in fact, she has a pretty serious uh, sort of, not, perhaps maybe not life-threatening, but a head wound that is bleeding currently. She was driving fast enough that the sudden impact of the car into the telephone pole, which has bent a little bit, um, that has been bent sort of in the ground, knocked askew. Um, the airbags didn't matter for her. She sort of like slammed her head on the sort of airbag and um, is pretty uh, definitely bleeding from a wound on her head. And she's out cold. So you will be able to walk away from this, though. I'm going to say that you take one harm from this, given that you have been in a uh, fairly serious uh, car accident um, at high speeds. As for your opportunity, well, she is seriously injured. And there are a number of people that have started moving towards the accident. You could certainly try and gain a debt on her in this moment. 
Okay. So, but she's out cold. She's out cold. And how would I gain a debt on her by not leaving her for dead? By not completely leaving her for dead. Whether or not that is you calling an ambulance or some other method of oh yeah I'll call an ambulance care of her for the moment uh, does the car look like does she need does do I need to pull her out of the car I think I'll, if she doesn't look like her neck is broken or something I'll take a minute and remove her from okay the vehicle Okay. Does she have a phone? Uh, she does have a phone, yes. It's in sort of a little snap purse of hers. Okay. Can I open her phone and get into it? Uh, it is locked, though you could get to the um, emergency contacts if needed. Are you planning okay. on taking it with you, or...? If I take her phone, it's going to be a lot harder for her to catch up. Uh, I call. I mm-hmm. use my phone to call the ambulance, and I call nine one one on my phone and put her phone in my pocket. All right. All right. Um, there are a number of bystanders that um, um, sort of run forward as you sort of lay her down, and one of them's just like, uh, "You need some help there, dude." How's it going? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna call nine one one. Unless you want to. Yeah. No, man. I I don't. Uh, I I don't. I don't. I don't fuck with the authorities, man. Hey. Hey, I can't blame you. I'm. I, I, I'll, I'll call. Him. Just uh, tell. I'm fine, and the the lady's fine. We just need to get her an ambulance, and and. Uh, and I appreciate your concern. Have a great day, man. Yeah, dude. Make sure, uh, make sure you take care of yourself. You have got a little blood coming out. I need, huh? Just, yeah. uh, and he just sort of wanders off. At this point, I'm like kind of waving people hey, off, like. Fine, yeah. and I'm like pretending to talk to Mandy. Like, oh, you're okay. Yeah, you're fine, aren't you? Yeah, you're yeah. doing fine. Yeah, yeah. And as you wave them off, people begin to disperse. They have other things to talk about, and this is L.A. Accidents happen all the time. People drive like assholes. Hi, this is uh, Joe Rabain. Um, listen, I'm here on the. Uh, what highway am I on? What? Where? Um, that's a. That's a good question. You're on a highway. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> and so, Am I on the 10? Um, so, uh, let's see. so you have just uh, left Boyle Heights and you're heading sort of north. Uh, north. Uh, yeah. Well, you're not quite on the 10. Um, you're sort of heading to the 10. Um, so you're like on, we'll say, North Soto Street on your way to the 10 out of Boyle Heights. Yeah. So, hi, hey, how's it going? Uh, J. Francis Rabain, uh, you may recognize me from, yeah, listen, I've just been in a, you know, a little fender bender. We've had some uh, looky-loos out here on the 10. Uh, guess, you know, you might want to come out here, go ahead and uh, register a sig alert because uh, this is getting uh, pretty bad out here. We're wrapped around a telephone pole and uh, we got one injured, uh, but I got to make it to set. So, so I'm just going to, you know, leave her right here. I just don't want anybody, you know, anybody, Wait. good Lord, saying no, I didn't sir, do the right thing. Sir, we need you to stay, sir, we need uh, you to stay the at the site. Came. Stay sir, at the site. we need you to, yeah, but my to, bus is to here, stay at and the, I've got, prepare medics to arrive. I've got bus fare. All right, I'm going to do my best, but listen, sir, I'm going to let you go to, because uh, I got my bookie calling me, and, uh, but she's, she should sir, be fine. She's stable. You. She just needs to pick up. Sir, we need you to stay at the site of the, of the accident. For the police to arrive and the paramedics. Oh yeah, okay, I'll be sure to do that. And hey, we support our local police, okay? Um, 
Thank you. Just stay right there, sir. Is the... Sure. We'll have an Thank ambulance you. on we'll immediately on I the way up. out. I hang up. I hang up the phone. <laughs> Boring right. conversation, anyway. Uh... <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Maya, Mindy, Mango, Mandy, Mandy. You came and you bought me, and you got into a car accident with me. Uh, it's been nice meeting you. I'm gonna I'm gonna take your phone, so that you can't uh, call anybody for a while, because uh, I gotta shoot at the gates of hell uh, in the morning, and you're not gonna keep me from doing it. So, and I call an Uber. Great. Um, as you call that Uber, uh, first would love to shout out uh, Tabletop Horror. Thank you for the crits for Octo and Joe. Um, let's get this movie made indeed. Um, shortly before this uh, Uber call goes out, Juniper, um, you're sort of trolling around LA looking to pick up some rides after having dropped off um a uh frequent uh uh passenger uh, of nathan hochel at the uh, la museum county museum of art um and uh you're sort of driving down um hmm driving down we'll say you're on wilshire it's a big road it's a long road that goes on forever um and You you hear the sudden sound of car alarms and panicked screaming. And you see sort of a car, in, the car in front of you sort of veer immediately to the left. And as they veer to the left, you suddenly see perhaps what the panic is about. Um, you felt sort of the earthquake roll through um, a moments ago. And um, and you thought nothing of it. It was a fairly strong earthquake, but not um, unsettlingly so. Um, earthquakes are fairly normal around here. At least until you see that the road ahead of you has sort of a, a split has been uh, formed across it. Um, and there is sort of this smoky substance that you've seen before. This sort of, this almost sort of like, like black smoke that almost glows and at the edges there's sort of this reddish tinge, this blackish reddish tinge. And it forms into the shape of, it almost looks like a, a wolf of some sort, though its edges are undefined. Um, and not quite all there. And you've seen something similar, though not in this form. Um, though whether or not Juniper remembers exactly where or when that happened is entirely up to you. Um, and you see this thing, it's got these sort of barely, these like co almost coal-like red glowing eyes, just like, like the, the last embers of a fire. Um, as the head sort of whips around as you're driving at this thing and into staring right at you, what do you do? I mean, I would I would stop for that. Right. Seems important. You screech, you screech to a stop, um, in front of this uh, in front of this uh, shadow beast, and it growls at the car. And it doesn't sound like the growl of a dog, um, as I've described it before. It almost sounds like someone took a human scream and distorted it into a growl. And then it lunges straight for car? your windshield. Oh, uh, it's God. maybe about it's maybe about uh, seven eight feet away from you, from the car, from the okay, edge of the car. Great. If it lunges at my car, I would lay on the horn like, Burr, like, excuse me. Okay. All right. Are you just staying there as it, as it's lunging for you? Well, 
I don't want to be rude. <laughs> okay. Um. I really need that five star review, Tommy. <laughs> My life. Uh, so you don't currently you don't. So you don't currently have a passenger. I will say that you don't currently have a passenger. But still. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm Ubering here. Yes, indeed. Um. Okay. Um. Just roll me and escape a situation. We're gonna see how this goes and what the consequences of this are. So just just roll me escape a situation. You do I mean, have it rerolls. Should just, it should, I'm gonna probably preemptively call on one of those rerolls. But okay. Um uh, what category is reroll a or what category? Uh, escape a situation is under blood. Blood. Ah, there we go. Ooh. <laughs> Would you like to use a reroll? No. Like I said. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like no, to use another reroll? <laughs> Would you no, like to I burn like through those rerolls I've today? Earned it. I've, ear I've earned it. <sighs> okay. So this. This shadowy beast goes right through your windshield. Like, it doesn't break the windshield. It just sort oh, of God. merges God. right God. through it. Yeah, and you perhaps throw your arm up in an attempt to sort of block it. And you feel almost like you feel it bites down on your arm. And you almost feel like its fangs are sinking into you, though you don't feel your skin breaking. You don't feel any bone crunching. It's almost as someone is sliding a cold knife uh, into your arm. And it's painful. It hurts. Um, and uh, um, please take three harm. Okay. Sure. Which is a critical harm i mean you asked nicely so <laughs> what does juniper do at this point as you feel this thing and you feel your arm going cold uh and numb well i mean at this point i would like to give him a bad review so i will press on the gas of my prius and i will slowly accelerate through him Slowly, slowly accelerate through him. Now, is this slowly relative to actual acceleration, or are you just, you know, just shh, go like? Tell me, have you been in a prius? Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually been in a Prius. Um, okay, well, I will put I the pedal very, in the metal, very and it will very politely be like, "We're going now." <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, um, please roll me escape the situation again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> would you like you to kidding? use a reroll? I would love nothing. Would you like to see an exorcist? Use reroll. Okay. Oh my god. There you go. All right. <laughs> oh, Prius. All right, so on a 10 plus, you get to choose one from the list of um, bad things that happen when you escape a situation. So you get to choose uh, only one. Um, so uh, if you pull up the sheet, you can see that the options are you suffer harm during your escape. You end up in another dangerous situation. You leave something important behind. You owe someone a debt for your escape or you give in to your base nature and mark corruption. Um, I will advise that you perhaps not take harm during your escape as taking another three harm, unless you take a scar, uh, unless you take uh, some sort of uh, um, scar, will kill you. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't want that. I want to take a corruption. Okay. Um, so what does what does corruption look like for you as someone who is completely mortal but aware of things that happen uh, in this? It is 
is it sort of uh just the the fact that of like having to deal with the supernatural the things the parts of the city you'd rather not deal with what does it look like for juniper uh what does it feel like yeah uh so i feel like juniper will go out of her way to be polite to all creatures dead or alive uh to get that good review but also because like she knows if she wrongs them like they can just coexist like right man we can just coexist but on this occasion she was like no i'm gonna hit it with my prius and did and so now i feel like that probably like corrupts her into seeing like more of like this world that she never asked to see mm -hmm. um all right and you like you suddenly accelerate and you push through it and its body sort of as incorporeal as it is sort of just whooshes through you and you feel sort of that same coldness sort of pass through you um um and the shadowy beast sort of dissipates and reappears outside your car not that it disappeared um and as you're accelerating away you feel your arm throbbing you feel that cold numbness uh setting in you can see sort of these blackened veins um in your arm and it hurts it's not it is sort of that one of those sort of like deep-seated hurts um perhaps a something that juniper is uh familiar with after her accident um um and uh as you um begin to accelerate away the shadow beast begins to charge after you um and then you see a man slick black hair nice some sort of blazer with a print on it step into the road and grab the beast by its neck and then you see the beast sort of dissipate and as you drive off, uh, you see sort of the man look after your car and then finish crossing the street as if nothing had ever happened. He didn't like take down my license plate number. <laughs> you could go back and ask. No, I don't want to do that. Um. Your app suddenly dings with a um, with a, a potential customer. Um, I think Uber tells you the name on the account, so you see a uh, a familiar name for one uh, J. Francis Rabain. I accept the ride. All right. You find, Joe, do you stick near the car crash or do you sort of move down? I want to walk, I want to start walking down the street, but not far enough away to just want to get a little bit away from the accident and call Ida and find out where everybody is. Right. Ida, you get a phone call as... You're at the scene, and we're basically, basically pretty soon after the events of last session. So we're just all recovering from, uh, oh, oh, hold on. Okay, that was weird, it's out for me. Um, so we're basically all just finishing up with the demon dogs, right? Mm-hmm. This is, this is, okay. so this is just after, so this is a few minutes after, this is during the, this is right after the time that, um, Auden, um, did something, um, talked, like, basically seemingly saved, um, Detective Lee's life, although you're not quite sure what exactly oh. happened or what Auden did, um, exactly, um, but you're getting this phone call, and welcome Raiders, uh, welcome to our, uh, penultimate episode of Eclipse. 
uh, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, things are spicy. So you get this call. You see Joe's name light up on your screen. Uh, I, I answer it. J- Joe? Hi. What are you guys doing? Uh, that's a that's a really loaded question right now, Joe. What are you doing? Is it? I was nearly killed in a uh, serious car accident uh, because my bodyguard and my spiritual advisor are up living it up in the Hollywood Hills like the mamas and the papas while I'm down here getting chased uh. by smoke dog. And fucking with somebody named Mindy who thinks that Octavia that Octo is like her prop or or like I, I don't know. She hey, 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 Joe! Might I be his mom you're, for my sake. Couple steps, I, couple steps behind us, my man. We have been dealing with those dogs a while. I saw I think somebody get brought back to life, and meanwhile, I've also seen somebody who is dead talk. So you know. Um, there's a lot going on right now, my fucking man. So, uh, what, what, okay. Why don't you just, just where, where are you? You take notes. That'd make a good uh, script. Actually, we should, we should start getting a documentary and like a, nar- like a fictional narrative type project together of, of these events. Okay. Like the back, whole. Back, to the, question. Joe, Joe, back to the question. Where the fuck are you? Where are you? I'm on the 10. I'm on the 10. Uh, the car's upside down. Uh, Mandy is, uh, unconscious. Uh, I got an Uber on the way. I did call 911, but I'm hoping to ski daddle before the 5-0 makes an appearance because, uh, we've got a fucking shoot in the morning and I don't know if the crew made it out from, uh, the park alive. Uh, so I got some phone calls to make, but I'd like, uh, mostly I need to know where to go. Uh, somebody's about to pick me up and okay. I, I need to go, know where to go. Okay. Um, outside of outside of game right now. Did we make a plan to go anywhere that I, I'm just not aware of? Okay. Then I just, wherever uh, our location is, I don't remember if our location was named. I give him that location. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Um, 1500 East Vine Avenue, West Covina. Uh, West Covina. Yeah, are you far? What the fuck are you, the fuck are you doing at West Covina? Oh, right, you're out there hanging out with werewolves. That sounds like a, that sounds like a time. Yeah, all right, I'm headed your way. Okay. Don't Joe. move, don't uh, die. Nope, you don't either. Aw. We're like a buddy cop movie. Hello? We're like Tango and I, Cash. I hung up. Hang up. up? Super hung up on you. That's fine. All right. A Prius pulls up in front of you. A familiar looking Prius with a familiar looking driver. Get in. Oh! Oh! Hey, how's it going? West Covina! Oh, hey. hey, hey, Joe. Oh, I know that voice. Hey, I, I know you. You're the yeah. Hey, how's it going, J- J- uh, Jasmine? J- no. Oh, I know this. Jackson Brown. I don't know. It's something. You just J- look something. at your app, oh. man. It'll tell you my name. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Hey, uh, listen. I'm going to West Covina. I'm going to go meet up with some friends. Try not to get killed by uh, any monsters or anything, and uh, don't get pulled over. And drive slow, because I'm gonna twist one up here in the back seat really quick. Um, yeah, Joe, I drive a Prius. I can't do anything but slow. Let's go. <laughs> oh, good. Thank God. Thank God. I'm gonna burn one down here in the back seat. If you don't mind. Come on, pretty. How yeah, much just just to burn like, one. Like, it's not super legal, but if I let you, you just don't put it in the review, okay? You just give me five stars, but you don't put that in the review. Oh man, are you kidding? You're the best. I've had the I've had the the Juniper Perry experience before. This is gonna be a thrill ride, like I've never seen. As long as I can, but just don't take any hard right turns. A, Hang on, it'll right. be not a thrill ride though, Joe, because I'm gonna just drive real slow. 
It's been a it's been uh, a whole hey, night. Been... Boy, it sure has. Did you feel that uh, earthquake there? Yeah. I got bit by a dog. Yeah, no, what? I got bit by a big smoke dog. It's like uh, Ghostbusters when it uh, rushes Rick Moranis, you know, except this one bit me. Didn't didn't uh, take over my corporeal form or anything. It just bit the shit out of my leg, and that oh, hurt. Man, you... And then this lady showed up, threw, threw an honest-to-God no, healing no, 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 potion no. at me. Like a, like Joe, a, no, 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 like no, no, a D&D Joe. or some shit. What was, did you, what was the dog's name? What? What, what, did, what was the dog's name? What was the dog's name? Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't Cujo. I didn't. I didn't cat. You know, I didn't. It didn't have a tag. It wasn't tagged or anything. This is probably why we need to involve the city. It's got to be an ordinance against some some this sort of thing. Smoke dogs coming up out of the ground, biting the shit out of you. Anyway, so lady threw like a health a mana dog. potion at me. Like a smoke, like a smoke dog, and then she had a like a lasso. She had like a rope. She put this rope around the dog's neck and got the dog off of me. I've I'm not sure how much of it actually dog. happened. Is that like a different breed? Is that like one of those like parlor breed dogs, man? Like, it was it gray? Was it white? Smoke, smoky, smoke, smoke form. Is made. It was of smoke, you know. Like pretty fluffy. I, it, it, I had right? it. It was the type I have not seen on the Westminster Kennel Club dog show, and I watch it every year with my mother. Oh, shit, man. Me too. I love it. But, uh, but no, it was some kind of weird monster shit came up out of the ground, and, uh... Wait! So... Joe, did the dog have, like... Did its eye... Did it have eyes that looked like... Were it, was it, like, orange and red-ish? Uh, did it? Yeah. I'm asking yeah, like you, man. I don't know. Dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were glowing. They were crazy. It was insane. There's like four people in this office right now. Hey, how's it going? Uh, no, it was, it was insane. Uh, glowing eyes, but it really bit me. It was like incorporeal, but I was bleeding and it hurt like hell. Oh, shit, man. Listen, Okay. Don't put this in the review either. I'm going to tell you something, but it's just, it's it really has to be a secret, okay? I'm going to tell you, but it has to be. You can't tell anyone. Do you, you got it? I love secrets. Hit me. Okay. I mean, like, really, man, if, if I see this in a review, I'm going to be so upset, man. No, okay. I mean I was gonna pitch. I was gonna pitch a documentary to HBO like the secrets of Uber drivers, you know, like Taxi Cab Confessions in the '90s. But then oh, we junked that project. Don't say that. I can't tell you now. That's what I'm saying. Nobody cares. So you can tell me because the project went nowhere. So I keep secrets. So just tell me. Go ahead. Hit me. Oh, okay. I, it's not like Cash Cab. Like you won't get a prize. But anyways, so I was, I was like, I was driving just now, man. Like on my on my way to get you when like my when my phone went off and like there was. It was like a, there was like a dog, right? Like a dog man. And it like, it like came through my windshield and it bit me on my arm. My arm really hurts, man. S Sidebar, do you have any ibuprofen? I ran out. Anyways, it really hurt. It had some red eyes. I hit it. I hit it with my Prius as hard as I could, man. Yeah, how'd that go? I don't know. The thing I Some, the thing I saw could take a Prius. It take a little more than a Prius to bring down the dog I saw. Was it a smoke dog? Bro, I don't. I don't. It, it didn't seem to be because, smoke because it bit me I got no, on my on my arm, Joe. On my arm. It oh bit my me. god! I mean, show me the freaking arm. Let me see. The, wait. You, I have some Aleve on me, but you're gonna need more than Aleve. That thing got a hold of you. Look at that. I don't know what you should to let do. me drive. No, that's a, I don't really understand my contract that well, but I know that that is not allowed. I'll never find out. You don't have a camera in here, do you? Let me drive to West Covina. You're bleeding like a stuck pig. We gotta we gotta hit a Walgreens and patch you up. I need some Gatorade anyway, like the lemon lime Gatorade, not the red one, just like the, the normal, my favorite just normal Gatorade. 
Yeah. Oh, no, I know. Like oh my god. Best. And a honey bun? No, but you seriously pull over. I'll I'll take over. No, listen, I can't let you do that. You can sit in the front seat though, and like you could just help like steer. No, I can't sit like, in the front seat. No, I'm going like, to. You could just. No, sit in the front seat. Though. All right. If you get pulled over, we're good for trouble. All right. And as you argue about who's going to drive and start heading towards West Covina to meet up with the others, we're going to shift focus to West Covina and the other four of the group. As you've just um, fought off these weird smoke dogs, um, and uh, Auden, you have just um, extended Detective Lee's life. He is still unconscious. Um, he is, um, but he is breathing, and he does not look like he's about to die. And you can hear Cassie's car coming up the block because once she'd seen the dogs were dealt with and Auden was looking after the detective, she'd gone down the block to where she parked her car to go and get it to bring it up because we need to get out of here. Does the uh, detective have like a walkie-talkie on him? Uh, Yeah, yeah, he does have a walkie-talkie. And there are, you can hear the police radio sort of going like crazy with like reports and uh, of seemingly, they're calling it wild dogs um, in the city. Um, and there's a number of, you know, the reports of accidents related to that. So uh, Octo like notices the car coming down the street and he looks down to this detective and he's been right there with Auden as Auden went through this process of saving the detective's life. And he bends down and he scoops up the detective with his walkie talkie. And he kind of looks around and he's looking for a place to kind of like put him where he won't get run over or, you know, bitten yeah. by another smoke. Dog. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could always set him in one of the cop cars. There's two here, um, one which you have just lifted and used to smash within which its its wheels have definitely been blown um but the other one seems to be in fine condition or you could set him on the lawn in the small tiny like six by six lawn of dead grass in front of the house um but it'd be out of the okay. way yeah he'll put him he'll take him to the cop car that he didn't use he didn't th that octo didn't throw across the street uh, mm -hmm. and just kind of like open up the door and slide him gently inside and kind of lean in. He's going to like take the time to buckle the detective up uh, and mm -hmm. then grab that walkie talkie and just sort of click it, hoping that he can get through to somebody on the other side just to say, mm -hmm. uh, hey, whoever's listening, um, you, one of your men is hurt. Uh, license plate of the car he's staying in is he gives the numbers and uh, I think you know it was smoke dogs I don't know if that means anything to you he's gonna be okay but he's gonna need some medical assistance this is Octo Octo man anybody there do I have to take my finger off the button or this is dispatch. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that, please? Oh, all right. Yeah, sure, man. Whatever you need. Uh, so this is Octo Man. Uh, I'm an, I'm an actor, and I found one of your detectives injured, bitten by a smoke dog. Uh, he's gonna be okay, but uh, probably gonna need some medical assistance. Uh, I put him in a cop car. I strapped him in real good. Uh, it's West Covina. License plate is. Gives the numbers. You get that? Did I? Hello? This is dispatch. I read you loud and clear. We're going to need you to stay at the scene to give your uh, um, statement to the arriving uh, police uh, and paramedics. Um, please stay uh, with. Uh, uh, with the uh, officer. Uh, thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, did you catch my name? 
Yes, I did. I did write down that uh, we did catch that you are Octo Man. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Click. Throws the walkie-talkie uh, back in the car and like, shuts the door. Yeah. As and you, you throw go. it, you hear that maybe they didn't quite close their line in here. What kind of name is Octo Man? Sounds like a goddamn Spider-Man villain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you toss the uh, you toss the walkie-talkie into the car, um, and you shut it. Where are the rest of y'all doing, Ida, Auden? Uh, I think I'm gonna take stock of the surroundings, uh, just making sure, like, if our party is okay, kind of just making sure everyone's still within eye shot of one another, just seeing if anything seems off. I mean, in that. It's a loaded statement considering we just got attacked by shadow demon dogs, but if anything else seems off, I would like to try and figure it out. So are you trying to figure out someone in specific or? No, I I'm taking stock of the scene to see if anybody okay. might be lingering or if there's just anything kind of weird still going on or if this seems to be like, okay, um... the situation has ended. Yeah, just do a general mind roll. So just roll, figure someone out, and I'll tell cool. you what you sort of gleam um, from the situation. Cool. Would you like to use a reroll on that? No, I'll, ke I'll keep the eight. I'll keep the eight yeah. for now, because I only got All two right. more rerolls. So. so you can see a number of... Um, of sort of the neighbors have started like coming out of their houses um maybe not they haven't so they're not coming out you know straight up they heard gunshots so they're trying to keep low they're like maybe peeking their head around the corner given that the gunshots have ended um uh, and so you can see a number of eyes sort of peering out from behind um curtains or like with their doors slightly open um just kind of peeking their head out ready to duck back in should there be any more danger um, you know, there's only, there's only houses on one side of the street. The other side is sort of this, uh, you know, hill, this sort of like generally rising hill with a bit of forest on it. Um, so you don't have to worry about that side. So, um, there's, yeah, there's mostly, um, you can hear police sirens elsewhere, though they don't seem to be coming towards you at the immediate moment. Um, but, uh. Otherwise, it's eerily quiet, as if, you know, the um, city has been put on pause for a moment. I think then if everything seems to be somewhat sustainable, uh, just moving mm -hmm. towards where everyone is, where Cassie is and Auden and trying to, you know, get everyone physically closer together, if we're not already. Mm -hmm. All right, Cassie pulls up in her car. Auden, are you just your your arm? Your arm as well has been um, hurt seriously when uh, you weren't quite able to make uh, connection with your sword, um, and you can feel sort of that that numbness in it. And um, can I? I'm trying to remember. Oh, wait, is there? Can you roll to heal? Or is that a specific? I can't remember if that's a. No, so you do have to uh, find someone with the ability to do so, um, and you're probably going to want to see someone sooner than later. You are not dying, um, but this would be like this would sort of be like the equivalent of, um, you know, dislocating your shoulder and not getting it treated. Um, so like you can you can continue operating, but you know you're gonna be um, a bit hurt as you're operating. And I would definitely I would definitely say that given time and resources, like you definitely uh, can very easily if if you get back to like Eden Core can get someone to treat you. Um, Eden Core has resources. You have a long list of contacts that you've made over time. So it's not like you don't know how to do it, you just have to call in the right person because this isn't any ordinary wound. This is 
Hey, yeah. we need to okay. get in the car. We've been firing guns. I will... Yeah, I will, um... Walk on over. Um... Is there anything left of that dog? Any of them? Nope. It just... just They just sort of... Like, when you shot through them, they just kind of, like, psh, dissipated um, into the air. Um, the fissure in the ground is still there, though there's no more, no longer this sort of smoke pouring out of it. Or the shadow pouring out of it. I... I look to I look to those of us who are still here, uh, standing around, um, and sort of like taking stock. And I say to very loudly, "Everyone, get in the car." But I walk over to the fissure real quick. Okay. What would you like to do um, at the fissure? Um, da, 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 da. I'd like to investigate a place of power, if that counts awesome. as a place of power. I don't know if it does. Yes, it does. Please roll with wild. And Mark Wild. And as I do so, that's that's what I needed. Wild is what I needed. So nice. uh, let me uh, investigate place of power. I am all out of rerolls, aren't I? So mm -hmm. it's fun. I'm having a really lucky day. So uh, holy shit, that's well, the first thing that's yeah. gone right all day. All right. <laughs> I'm so happy. So. When you investigate a place of power, roll with the faction that owns it. On a hit, you see below the surface to the reality underneath. On a 10+, plus, you oh. can ask the MC one question about the schemes and politics of the faction in question. I stand corrected. Uh, I didn't change the tab, so that was rolling with power mm -hmm. automatically. Uh, so mine is mm -hmm. two from that. So it's a nine, so it's only a partial So system. nine, okay. Okay, so you see below the surface to the reality underneath with a nine. This is, this, whatever happened before has seemingly stopped, but what did happen before was it, it almost appeared, and you get sort of this faint, you can still smell brimstone, and it's almost as if this fissure had become a rent sort of in the fabric of the worlds. You perhaps maybe have never been to another sort of domain, another world, but you know they exist, that the Fae come from uh, from somewhere uh, otherworldly, that demons and angels come from somewhere otherworldly. And this has the smell of, well, hell. Okay. Give me, give me a moment. I just got to check sync. Uh, yes. I just need to check sync on my on my uh, expanded sheet. Yep. Yes, Octo. Yeah, Octo didn't get in the car. Octo followed Auden over to the Fisher, and I imagine is like standing mm -hmm. behind him, because mm -hmm. Octo now that Octo is sort of changing his perspectives and directives are changing. He wants to know what's going on too and he thinks he might have a little bit of an idea. I would like to, I could either, I, I'm, I'm torn. I wanna either try to put a face to a name for these smoke dogs or also investigate this fissure and see if I might be able to learn a little bit more as well. I was just gonna say, I would like to do the same thing. All right, um, I would say this is more- I'm gonna like, drive even, off like, the creatures around the block. I'll see you later. Okay, Cassie's dipping. Because yep, Auden, Auden does have his car. Okay. Cassie is dipping. Okay. Um, Octo and Ida, this is more, even with even with the sort of the, the shadow beasts, um, this would still be sort of more of an investigative place of power than put a face to a name. So you are okay. both going to roll with wild. See what you learn. This will also... How do I uh, do that? Um, so you're going to go in the center, there's going to be faction moves, and you're going to see, uh, there's going to be one that says roll, uh, investigate a place of power. Uh, below that, there should be a, dr this is in the center of your character sheet, um, sort of center lower part, and then you're going to go to the drop down box and change that to wild before you roll. Gotcha. Would you and like to use your last reroll? 
I sure would. And Tommy's just going to level plus me three, up. So that was a bad roll. This will okay. also level yeah, then... me up if we're doing wild. Wow. Everyone's just yeah. leveling them up. Um, so remember, you can take your advance, like clear your advance boxes, take this advance whenever you feel like it. Wow, those that is just some... Because you have a plus three in wild, um, Octo. Um, so that I'll is... Use, I think I have rolls. more re-roll. I think I have um, more. Or do I not? I think that was your last one? Because you had one at I'll the beginning of this. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So, Octo, you get the same thing. You get the smell of sort of like the brimstone and, and sort of, um, you know, you've you've been around Mandy as she does things. She is, you know that Mandy is a, um, is sort of a, a sorcerer of some power. And she herself has... Um, you know, dealt with things that come from other worlds, um, sometimes summoning, you know, demons or um, the like before. And so you recognize that smell. You've smelled this before. Ida, you get to ask me one question about the schemes. And I'm going to make it broader than just the schemes and politics of the faction in question. Um, you just get... Okay. You get to ask me a question, and I will answer it Sort of as much as you would be able to glean from this. Uh, it does help that you are an okay. article. So the questions uh, are on the basic moves, right? Or where are these? No, there is, this is a broad, open-ended question. You get to... Oh, this is okay. up to Yeah. Yeah. So this is about the, the finisher? Not... Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, like, like normally it'd be about the faction and what their schemes and, and movements are, but since this okay. is not a per like a thing, this is like like just ask me a question and I will answer it to the best okay. of sort of what you would be able to gleam as an oracle. How how is this person related to this scene? How is this Fisher related to this scene? Okay. Um okay. well, uh you you start putting things together. And you remember the last time someone died that Cassie sort of brought that evening, Cassie sort of brought the knowledge of that body to you. You do remember that there was an earthquake earlier that day. And you remember this earthquake and this earthquake was bigger. This happened um, pretty soon after this body. This body is no more than um, a couple hours old, um, at best, at, at, at latest. Um, and so something about the people who have died has triggered some sort of, you're not going to guess these, are, you're going to guess that these are not natural earthquakes. These are not, you know, your standard earthquakes. These are being triggered by something and that trigger is the death of these people. Um, and you can be, you can begin to think back about how there have been a number of earthquakes the last few weeks, um, though you didn't know exactly their cause, but they have been growing stronger and stronger. Um, and as you sort of think about this, you sort of have this flash of vision. This isn't a strong vision. This isn't, this is more almost as if your power is recalling something it saw but adjusting it a little bit. And there are now 11 broken locks. Okay. Uh, and the last time, if I'm not mistaken, there was only like three or something, right? Uh, there was only 10 broken last time. Oh, okay. Um... Okay, so, okay. Do I get any more questions or is that my only question? No, that is your only question because it gets to be so broad. Cool. It gets to be, That's yeah. fine, that's perfect. Um, yeah. Um, yep. So yep. I, I'll kind of like, with Octo kind of investigating this little scene, I imagine everyone else might be preoccupied, but I'll, I'll turn to Octo and go, uh, Octo, you know those earthquakes? That we've been having? Yeah, sure. 
course. I, I, I'm not sure if you figured it out by now, but these people dying are causing those earthquakes. And I, I don't remember exactly what it means, but the, the, this is, something's about to happen. Something big is about to happen. And it's not going to be good. Ida, you have uh, any idea who's doing this? Who's responsible? I mean, the only thing that I've been running on is this Cassie theory of some sort of angry entity. I don't know who unleashed it, and I can't really figure out why, but I'm close. We're close. I think this is why things are getting worse. Somebody knows that we're onto them. This sort of thing, these creatures, kind of person, kind of being that could summon something like that, could do something like that. Not many of them around. But I no. I do know one, one that could do something like this. One might have answers. I think then that would probably best be the, the, the next direction we go. And I, I, I'm kind of out of spoons. This is very above my repertoire and I'm not well, getting you, help you from do. the areas I usually thought. You don't need anything like that. You got me and Cassie and Joe and, and sort of doesn't say Auden, but behind his sunglasses, he does glance to Auden. Uh, even even Ida, uh, even Juniper would probably help out if you asked, I imagine. But if we go see this person I'm talking about, this... Uh, just, uh, I want you to promise me, will you remember what we talked about back there in that graveyard? And I asked you, yeah. Uh, just don't let me fall out of myself. Don't let me, if you see me struggling, just help me. I'll help you too. I promise. Yeah. I mean, I'm here, Octo. I'm I'm wrapped up in this now, so I'm not going anywhere. I've got your back if you've got mine. Okay. I think we should go um, see this person. Cassie's car uh, pulls back around the corner um, at the same time that a Prius starts rolling down the street as well. <laughs> oh, whoa. With one Joe and Juniper. <laughs> Really weird. Can I frame weird this talk. as Cassie's car is behind the Prius and she's like honking to get this Prius to move out of her way because she really wants to pick yeah. up Ida and everyone. Yeah, yeah, the Prius is going slowly. Uh, Juniper and Joe, you are pulling up on the scene where you can see sort of these uh, police cars that have pulled up and sort of taped off a clearly a crime scene. You can see your. Um, acquaintances or friends, depending on how you think of them, uh, sort of gathered around sort of another rent in the earth. Um, and there's a car honking behind you. What kind of car does Cassie drive again? Um, I don't remember what I've said before. Um, I'm like going to change whatever up, it was. Like, 90s car. Yeah, I'm going to say Toyota this car Corolla. is like, yes. And it's not got electric windows, so she's got to crank it down anytime she wants to yell at someone out of the window. We've got a beat up 90s Toyota Corolla uh, just talking at you. What? We're working here. Slow down. I like get out of the I car. I nudge Octo. I nudge Octo as, as the car pulls up 
because I, I I noticed Joe getting out of the car and I also noticed Juniper who's driving. I nudge Octo and go, hey, uh, your friend's back. And I go to I know meet Cassie at the window. I look back and uh, I just kind of shake my head at Octo just because he... And I go, I go to the window to see Cassie. I swear, fucking Uber only hires people who can't drive. <laughs> uh, you might, uh, as I like, as the window comes down, I'm gonna smack the window and like kind of lean on it a little bit and just be like, oh, you might want to reconsider that statement. Uh, we know that driver, Cassie. Sticks her head out the window, he sees Juniper. I don't know if I want to reconsider it. I think I'm probably quite accurate, but uh, we have to go. I know we can't just sit around a hole in the ground no, waiting I, for bad I know, things I know, to show I know, up. I know. I know. Uh, we got to get, we, we're following Octo. Octo's going to take us to someone who could, who might be able to help. He knows some witch or power person? I don't know. He, uh, he told me he knows somebody who could, uh, who could, either know or be a part of or something but uh, octo swears that he knows somebody so i i think it's a good lead fuck At me least, the uh, only thing perfect. i want to follow octo man for is where the good waves are and where the curly flies fries are at i mean fuck <laughs> hey i i'm wary too but you know i got a good feeling let's just let's just check it out cassie okay you're, you're always wanting to do the detective sleuth thing let's just fucking where else well, are we gonna go hide out right now? I don't know. We can figure it out. About? Get out. Joe, you're alive. What are you, guys, Joe, what are you guys, you guys talking the about the the earthquake or the smoke dogs or or what are you guys? What do you know about smoke are dogs? You guys. <laughs> Everyone gathers around this Corolla. <laughs> Wait, going? did I get out too? Did I, do I overhear this? That's up to you. That's up to you. I think as I, I said it. something to Cassie, I would, yeah, I would go and grab Juniper and see like, hey, like have a moment and just be like, uh, are you busy? Oh no, I just Juniper. like finished my drive. Like I hope he tips me, but like, yeah, I'm done. Ida, uh, okay, you can um, see that Juniper. You can see that Juniper's arm is um, um, sort of oh, yeah. got these sort of blackened veins right now um, and sort of held to one side. You should stay with us. You shouldn't go far. Oh, she, um, we need to do a Walgreens yeah. or something. Yeah, like, hold on, hold on. Anything? We gotta, we gotta, yeah, you need a, a med kit or something. Oh. Like you might lose an arm. Yeah, no. Look, so I just found out like this kind of dog like isn't even in the dog show. It's no. true. It's not the dog show. We we checked. It's, it's not. It's not, not even this this plane of existence. I guess that's why my See? arm looks so gnarly. Man, Told you. right? Like. Would they, I maybe have should, like, any... make a, they should like maybe make a class of dogs at Westminster for this. I'm feeling smoke, kind of smoke tired. monster breed. Would I have yeah? Would I have any inclination of what what to do to remedy this? Um, Gozer. They could call it the Gozer. Is breed. Cassie or, is Cassie around? Cassie near Juniper. She's at the car, but she's still in her car. Okay. So I imagine she's still in her car. Juniper, because Juniper okay. got out uh, of the car. If I take her over to Cassie and be like, "Yo, Cassie, we need help." Yeah, I mean, you could roll. I mean, you could certainly roll to see if you you like you know that like clearly this wound is not natural. Like I'm gonna tell you straight up, like you yeah. know you know this that's not natural and that it you know it looks fairly bad and untreated it could get worse. Um, it's not immediately life-threatening. It is perhaps life-threatening in the long term. If not treated, you would need to find someone uh, who has supernatural healing abilities. Um, 
I know someone, Octo. but also, can we just walk through what this scene looks like to all of the neighbors right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> they see, they see a Rolls Royce. Uh... Mysterious dog pack, <laughs> followed by gunshots. Now there's a Prius blocking the street with bleeding people getting out of it. Some angry chick in a beat up Toyota Corolla yelling, and the police guy is still down by the car. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, sorry. Like half alive sorry. in a car. Just, all the names no, 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 no. said about Westminster Canterbury. Should it? Yeah, I think I think uh, I bring I bring Juniper kind of direct her over to the group, and then uh, if I don't know what's going on, or if Cassie can't figure it out, I think I would ask Octo. I think I'd go back to Octo and be like, "Hey, uh, so your friend, yeah, the the one that you want us to go see right now, uh." Could they help with yeah. this? And then I point to like oh. Juniper's arm. <laughs> he sees Juniper's arm and he kind of like, he like shifts and straightens up and he kind of gets concerned. Hey, uh, Juni, are, are you feeling okay? Um, does it feel like it's numb or anything like that? Uh, oh, hey, um, hey man. Um, I mean, it hurts a little bit, but like Joe had some a leave, so I'm feeling okay. Just maybe a little tired, but it's been a long day. Like the, he's like my tenth ride, you know. I uh, I'm... she might be able to help, but I'm making a deal with Mandy, but it's not a. Um... Sometimes the cost is a little higher than what you get. You know, I've seen her make a lot of deals with people and it doesn't usually work out too well for them, if I'm being honest. Did you say Mandy? Oh. Yeah, no. Uh, screw yeah, Mandy. Mandy. We're not doing that again. Mandy's oh, not going to be know, bothering Mandy. anybody for a while. Oh, Mandy's oh, not going to be fine. Who the fuck is Mandy? Left, I left Mandy on the side of the road unconscious on the 10. Uh, she's going to take a little nap for a while. And uh, I called a paramedic for her. Um, oh, Joe, did you hurt this woman? No. We were in a minor uh, you car You want to take accident. another run at that? No, it wasn't super convincing. Not directly. I mean, I didn't assault her or, or you directly cause her harm bodily harm Look, uh everybody get in a, the car a wet, wet we're gonna talk about this town. while we move we need to move we cannot just be stood here hovering in the middle of at least three active crime yeah, there, scenes there are police sirens at this point which you can definitely tell are probably getting closer <laughs> Um, you have three cars okay. here. There's a Rolls Royce, there's a Prius, and there's a <laughs> 1990s Toyota Corolla. <laughs> I way. immediately start I heading towards Auden's car. I immediately start heading towards Auden's car. I don't, I don't car. know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, man, but like, I, sh I should move my car. Like, I really, I can't afford a ticket. Man, tips have been like pretty yeah. bad this month. Like, do you wanna, can you like help me or I'll like, try. should I? Like, can I, do you think I can drive? Like, I... Do you, I'll drive. Octo, why don't you... Yeah. Yeah, Octo, go with Juniper, Cassie, and Joe go together. I'll drive Auden. Boom. Everyone follow me. Auden, you don't oh. even know yeah, where we're like, going. I'll let you drive my car, man, but just, like, don't put in a ride, because that's, like, definitely against the thing. We are going... We are going... To go back to my office, I'm going to have someone look at these injuries to the future. And then we will consider our move beyond there. We are heading to hey. Eagle Tower. All right, we'll do that, but let me show you the route. Because I really want to roll something I have on my sheet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so the plan is everyone's getting in their cars and you're all you're ca you're ca uh, caravanning over you're doing a convoy over to Eden Core. Yeah, but Cassie like wants to use her Eden knowledge power. of having been a cop in a former life and then a hunter to basically mm -hmm. go, like take streets that are not going to lead us dead into traffic and also be able to spot mm -hmm. if we're being tailed. 
so that I can use mm -hmm. my move. I think it's like follow me or something. Oh, it's called this way. I can lead people out of danger um, mm -hmm. if I roll. And okay. yeah, but I need to be leading. That's why. Okay. Cassie wants to drive. All right, and you know, you know where Eden Tower is. So yeah, sure roll do. Your move. Been there more than once. Roll your move. Uh, this way. Ten. On a awesome. 10 plus, you will get away safely. All right. So, Cassie, you are definitely more familiar with this side of LA than I would say probably anyone else in this group, given that you you live closest to here. Um, although, you know, uh, you probably live the closest out of everyone to here. Um, and so you know the quickest routes to take, um, the roads that are a little bit less crowded, you avoid the police um, you uh, do not notice any sort of tail, um, and you manage to get everyone to uh, Eden Tower in around like half an hour, which is pretty good. Uh, maybe, Tommy, maybe, I have a maybe question. a little bit more. I mean, uh -huh. one, everyone yeah. can obviously drive their own vehicles, Cassie can't control them. And the question, however, is Cassie has a frequency scanner which she uses to hear when like uh -huh. weird crimes are reported and stuff. Can I have that on and A, be using that to see where they're following? And then two, do we hear anything over it? Can I make a, some sort of, uh, I was going to say streetwise check. That's not what it's called in this game. No. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you. Just to see if we can get any more information from if the, if the cops know anything, to be honest. This feels, this feels like. Like it's almost kind of a hit the streets, but it's more of hitting a network than it is hitting a mm -hmm. a particular person. So yeah, roll hit the streets with mortality. Okay, hit the streets. Yeah. Oof. Oh wait, that was with power. Hold liked. on. Yeah. What's your What's your modifier on? Um, oh, I didn't even see the first roll. I was on my okay. character sheet. Um, but my right. modifier we'll take the with more. We'll take the ten. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll take the 10. So, um, I'll allow you to mark mortality on this one because it's you kind of using your, your, your sort of network. Um, and so you scan, you scan the sort of the police network and Joe's sort of there with you. Um, and for the first little bit, it's probably a little bit hard to sort of list pay attention to the police scanner, uh, given that, um, Joe is probably also talking your ear off about something or another. <laughs> um, um, but you are, you sort of like, you've learned to deal with this. You've learned to train with this to sort of keep your ears open. And you can hear that there are, like, it is very active. Like, there are reports across Los Angeles and the greater sort of Los Angeles area of sort of wild, packs of wild dogs is what they're calling them. Um, and so there are um, whatever the, um, the police code for wild animals escaped animals from the zoo you know there's quite there's actually you know that question is thrown out you know uh have animals escaped from the zoos nearby um etc um and there's a number of you know reported casualties um uh, throughout la um though they seem to not have um the usual sort of you know if they had been attacked by wild animals, they don't have those marks on them. Um, um, some sort of strange... You know, there are calls for um, hazmat crews to be called in because it people have died and the only sort of real sign that they've been hurt is that they have these sort of like... Um, like sort of like these blackened veins, like these darkened veins. Um, and... Um, so like hazmat crews are being ca uh, called in and, you know, officers are being told to be caution and keeping the area clear around any, uh, bodies like this that they find, uh, cause it might be an unknown, um, biological agent or something. So they're not sure. Um, but there's a lot of confusion right now. And that is what about what you get. And it, it's not, it's not concentrated in, um, any one particular area. It seems to be quite a f like there's quite a few areas that this happened in LA all right I think Don was gonna do something I saw Don very ready to do things 
Yeah, there's no way that Octo is driving the Eden Tower. That's not where he's driving. He's he's heading to the ten. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Are you and trying to find? For... Yeah. All right. You're trying to find, um, Mandy, um. And I want to preface this by saying Octo has never driven a car before. This oh is his no! First time. Didn't you drive for I mean, Auden over I mean, here? Like sensible for first-time drivers, so you're, you're probably fine. Oh yeah, this is the second time. That's right. That was the first the time. second time. Because you were talking to Auden's car. Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to talk to Juniper's car and <laughs> drive no, it? Not at the moment. No, he. I think he's probably okay. trying to talk to Juniper as they're driving. But he does like as soon as the as soon as like if Cassie turns down a side alley or something to like take a shortcut, mm-hmm. he's heading straight to the mm-hmm. tent. Okay. I mean, Cassie, you definitely notice Octo veering off. Um, like, I'll give you that with your this way roll. Um, so, like, you definitely know Octo sort of veers off. I don't think um, Auden and Ida have noticed yet. Do I notice? Are you still? Would Joe Rebane notice? <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> no, actually. He's probably like <laughs> hanging out the window with his camera phone trying to get like the sirens for dramatic LA police chase shots. Yes. Um yes. But does Cassie Being does friendly. Cassie do anything or do you keep heading for Eden Tower? I imagine she curses Octo under her breast and will toss her phone mm. to Joe and be like, send a text to Octo, find out where the fuck he's gone. Why is he not? Oh, for Christ's sake. And I, I call him. I call him. Octo, your phone starts going off. Okay, yeah. He, I mean, he'll pick it up. And he, like, he's even worse at driving uh, with a phone. This is this is also like a new thing, one-handed driving. And it's, sorry, Judy, just one second. Somebody's calling me. Oh, hello? This is Octo, man. What the hell are you doing? Oh, uh, oh, hey, hey, Joe, hey, uh, yeah, I, I don't think you should go to Eden Tower, man. I don't think it's a good idea. But you know, you do whatever is you that, want. Hey, is that where we're going? Are we going to? Okay, wait. I'll deal with that in a second. Hang on. No, look, where are you going? Oh, yeah, about that. Um. I'm gonna go see Mandy, make sure she's okay, and talk to her. Oh, about come something. on, man! No, she's she, Where the fuck she's is he not going? okay. He's gonna go, go see. He, he's gonna go see Mandy. Hold on a second. I can talk about it. Look, she's unconscious on the side of the tent. She threatened to like take you and kidnap you and take you out of the movie. And you have a fucking scene in to shoot in the morning. You're not gonna go kid rescue your kidnapper. Oh, weird, like owner mother type i'm not sure what kind of weird relationship you have with this person but it is interrupting the proceedings you need to leave her there she's probably been picked up by the by the Listen. she's in la general by now at cedar got, sinai or I some shit no, you say la general okay yeah i can check i don't too. know listen i know you're not dude, gonna check there you're gonna dude, run lines dude i promise you i'll run lines later i'm not gonna miss the shoot tomorrow or anything like that but there's something bigger going on here, Joe. There's something going on. You ever notice that what's happening, like it bears a little bit of like a weird resemblance to this movie we're doing, man. Like it, like it's like hell and earth. They're getting closer and closer together, man. You ever think about that? Well, I mean, in a in a roundabout way, there's there are similarities. the The point of the movie is that hell hell doesn't exist, and there's a more hopeful uh, end for us in the afterlife. But the, but look, hell doesn't exist, look. and and whatever's causing the smoke dogs, it's probably Mandy's fault or somebody Auden and or Ida I might know who can shut it off. You know, like a like a wizard or some shit. You know, it's not hell on yeah. earth. It's, it's look. Let's just get together. You can leave Mandy wherever she is. She needs medical attention. I, 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 
you, you. Why is it so... Imp why does she think that she owns you, Octo? You have a contract, and we have a really great relationship. Like, like I can't have somebody who can just pick you up and take you off the board in the middle of the night after a great night... Of, what, our, what, our second night of shooting? Listen, what? Joe. Who owns Octo? Whatever, whatever she says going on with your... Me. She says no. She says you're hers, brother. What does that mean? It's complicated, man. We have a complicated relationship, but I need you to do something for me. I've been there for you. I've supported you in your movie, your career. I've done everything I can to help you, and I'm gonna keep helping you, man, because I love you. You're like a brother to me, man. But to be honest. Yeah. I got to do this for me, and I got to do this for Ida, and I got to do this for Junie here, and I got to do this for the city, because there's something wrong here, man, and I'm telling you, Mandy's going to know, and I, I know maybe in the past I ain't stood up to her before, but things are different now, man. I feel different. There's something changing, and I know that I can stand up to her, and somebody's got to help Junie, and I don't trust Auden. Don't trust him, man. Don't you trust him either. Okay. All right. Well, you do what you feel is right. Uh, call time's 8.30. I got you, man. I won't miss it. I'm gonna run my lines tonight. I'm gonna memorize them, too. Like, maybe not word for word, but it's gonna be close, you know? And I'll feel it in my chest. I promise you that. Okay, I'm all right with a fair amount of ad-libbing. All right, well, stay safe, and uh, she's not going to be happy with me, you understand? Uh, she's gonna be probably going to be mad as a hornet in my ass, so, uh, you know, uh, let her know it's not personal. It's, uh, it's just Hollywood. It's just business. It's not personal. Yeah, man, don't worry. All right. Well, call me when it's done. I've always wanted to say that and like hang up the phone right away like in the movies I'm just gonna do that right now I'm gonna say call me when it's done and I hang up the phone wait a second man I thought that was fun I just hung right up meanwhile you just hung up on me Juniper. meanwhile as Octo's veering all over the road while on the phone Juniper Cassie Cassie can I ask you a question I don't know Joe what kind of a question is it gonna be well, you know, I'm sort of trusting you with a certain amount of my own uh, health and safety during the proceedings here while we're in production, and uh, I'm getting mixed messages about A, where we're going right now, and B, how much I should trust Auden Thornhart. Uh, a, we're going to Eden Court. B, not at all. Far out. C, where the fuck is Octo going and why is he going there? Also, why can I hear myself echoing around this Toyota Corolla? <laughs> I was gonna, yeah, my, uh, uh, it's the acoustics in these in these uh, uh, foreign cars. Uh, uh, so, uh, look, he's got a complicated relationship with this Mandy person. I may or may not have, uh, you know, uh, jackknifed the car we were in. I take Mandy's phone. Uh, is it an is it an arcane object, or is huh. it just a phone? Huh. I will accept huh. either answer, Tommy. Huh. No, let's call it an arcane object. I like this. <laughs> I want to appraise it. Okay. All right. What does that do? I don't know. Let's find out. It. Uh, I roll with mind, and uh -huh. on a hit, I get to ask you questions. All right, roll with mind. All right, here we go. I'm pretty good with mind. Yeah. Ooh. What? What? Got the ten. ten. That's a ten plus. So you get to ask two questions from your list there. I do. The main one is, uh, what secrets or powers does this object contain? And what rumors or lies surround its value? I don't care. Who knows more about this object or its powers? I, I would rather know 
What secrets or powers does it possess? And who would want to possess this? Okay. Um, this is Mandy's phone. Um, but after... But it's a bit more than that. Mandy is a sorceress of some power. Um, um, some would call them mages. Some would call them wizards. They all sort of fall under the same category. Various names for them throughout uh, history and time. But it's the 21st century. This is her grimoire of a sorts. Her... her, her uh, book of, of magical things in phone form. <laughs> and who would want to possess this? Well, Mandy, for a start. Mandy would definitely love this back. Uh, Mandy would 100% love this back. And let's call it, let's call it, um, let's call it an iPhone. It's an iPhone. Um, wait, I can't say that. Sorry, we can't say iPhone for legal reasons. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a U phone. Any phone. <laughs> It is an A phone. It is A phone. Um, but uh, um, um, who else would like to possess this? Well, any sort of person that falls under a... Uh, um, anyone who would like to gather magical knowledge. Grimoires are particularly coveted because um, they are, you know, uh, store, stores of knowledge. Um, and typically passed down from, say, mentor to mentee um, for generations and generations, and they are fiercely guarded um, for their secrets. Um, so anyone that wishes to know more about magic, say another wizard, uh, sorcerer, witch, mage, um, you know, anyone that's very interested in, you know, magic and the supernatural. Um, so yeah, it is a, it is a, it, this could hold a lot of potential arcane secrets if you can open it copy that i put it in my pocket and and really non nonchalantly i don't draw attention to it and i don't i, I try not try to keep it uh from keep cassie from noticing mm -hmm. i think i'm in a dark place in my head i was like i wish you cut off her finger then we get into it <laughs> I'm just like, bring me mandy's finger <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can jailbreak so, an A phone. You can get you can get around that. <laughs> but this isn't any A phone. This is a magical A phone. Um, so the four of you are heading to um, Eden Eden Tower. Let's jump over to Octo and um, Juniper. For story's sake, I'm going to say that they're still, they're just getting, because this is maybe bent, I mean, I guess they would be there, they'd be there pretty quick, and they'd probably head towards a hospital pretty quick after the scene of an accident. So by this time, yeah, I mean, they're, they've definitely headed towards, um, as much as I'd love to say they're still there, it wouldn't make a lot of sense if she had a pretty bad head injury. <laughs> Um, for them to be there. It's been it's been like 45 minutes at this point since since Joe left her there. 45 minutes an hour since Joe left her there. Um, so how do you want to go about finding Mandy? Uh, so Octo's best leads are probably to go to the hospitals um, that Joe suggested. <clears throat> but can I use, can I hit the streets? Can I imagine, like... Because maybe maybe Octo knows that if Mandy's in trouble, maybe like she has a system, right? Somebody else comes and picks her yeah. up. She, you know, you hypnotizes mm -hmm. somebody and goes somewhere she wants to go. Like mm -hmm. Octo might have an inclination of where she might be heading. Okay, yeah. Roll hit the streets for me with power. <clears throat> okay. Oof, a miss. Oof. Um, so this seems like and you can you find her car. Like that's not hard. It's not hard to find her car. It is still being um 
you know, there is a tow truck nearby. There are a number of there's a, a number of police cars um, as they're sort of unwrapping it from the from the telephone pole. Um, but the ambulance has left. Um, and so it seems like at the very least her typical methods of um, her typical methods of um, what she would do in case of injury did not happen. Are there any police or uh, medics still on the scene at all? <clears throat> there are definitely still some police there. There's one. There's okay. one set of police there. There's one cop car. Things are a bit crazy today. Octo swerves and like slams on the brakes because <clears throat> that's the only way to you know stop. And there's a little bit of jerk and comes to a stop. Um, and you see the police over. officers like both reach for their for their to their sides because. <laughs> Whoa. Um, hey, uh, Junie, I'm going to go talk to these nice gentlemen here in a second. I got to ask them a question, but, uh, uh, I just want to say, uh, I'm really sorry about what happened. I, I, I know, you know, I'm not asking you to forgive me, but I'm sorry. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, just, it's all right. Um, like, don't get a shot right now, and like, maybe don't slam the brakes on so hard next time. But everything else is fine. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go talk to him, and uh, hey, I'm I'm gonna find somebody who could help you. Um, but if they ask you for something in return. Just uh, say no, okay? You don't have to say yes. We'll figure it out. Like, what if it's a review, though? Never mind. Just you uh, go. Uh, just, I've been giving you five-star reviews every single day. I, you don't even pick me up. I just bring it in and give you a review. And, and I hope you like all the donuts and opens the door. Donuts that show up randomly out. outside her door, and she has no idea who they're from. <clears throat> um, and the police say, uh, one of them sort of calls out, "All right, stay back. This is this is a accident scene. Uh, don't know why you're driving recklessly around here. You're lucky that uh, it's a busy day, oh. and I don't have time to write you up for reckless driving." It's okay, man. Uh, I'm an actor. And I'm just coming off of a movie set because I heard that uh, my sister uh, was in a in an accident here, and I, I was just trying to find her. He's like slowly getting closer, but he's not aggressive at all. Mm -hmm. I was just maybe I was hoping maybe you could tell me where we could find her. Her name's Mandy, and I'm man, I'm real worried about her. All right. I'm going to need to roll mislead, distract, or trick. Okay. This is not going to be good. A nine. Nine. You succeed partially. Um, so, um, on a seven to nine, you pick two. Um... Uh, and you, if you have the basic moves, you can pick two from that list of mislead, distract, or trick yeah. from there. Let's and we see. can interpret these as they are before the situation, right? Um, so they don't have to be like, they're not like, they don't have to be hard lined. So I'm going to pick first. I'm going to pick you can fuse them for some time. Okay. And. you expose some weakness or some flaw. Okay. I'm going to say that the flaw and weakness that you um, expose is the fact that they are clearly, clearly over, like, over their heads right now, given the situation in LA. Like, the, like, the police department is, like, its resources are currently stretched to the limit. 
they are definitely a little confused by the whole like like they look at each other confused for a moment as you say you're an actor and they just sort of go like like this um to each other they sort of shrug their shoulders but their hands do move away um their hands do move away um from their weapons um and um yeah so they are they are just they're just like they're just stressed and overworked right now and you know there's all these they, no one's really sure what's going on so basically they are you know they're in a state of of mild uh, anxiety uh, not even mild anxiety right like it's it, this is a this is a pretty bad situation like for all of this octo in this moment while they're kind of um kind of confused and they lower their hands from their weapons he gets a little bit closer just very very slowly and keeps speaking but mm -hmm. they may or may not notice as he's speaking that if you were to look inside his mouth into the back of his throat you might see another eyeball there hanging in the back of his throat and there's a bulge a movement inside of his gut in front of him he keeps his back turned towards the car into juniper so she doesn't see but he slowly begins to lift up his shirt as he's speaking and as he starts to take off part of his shirt and lift it up it's like his skin is splitting open at his abdomen you can see other hands pushing out from the inside reaching outward and in the meantime he just says to them, So, Mandy, I need to find her because it's an emergency. A lot of people's lives might matter, might be on the line, and she might be able to help. My friend back there, she's hurt, and she needs her help too. And I don't have time to fuck around with you and your friend. So you're gonna tell me right now where the fuck Mandy is. And this is my new move that I got earlier this uh -huh. session. Uh-huh. Hideous message. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, roll persuade an NPC with spirit. Yep. uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a plus one on top of that for that earlier, uh, for the, because you did, you know, you did, they are confused right now. And, and they just start backing up and, and one of them is just like, look, man, we're just, we're just doing our job. We're just doing the, the they took him over to Adventist, uh, uh, Memorial. Uh, it's, it's like, it's like 20 blocks that, that way. Just, we're just doing our jobs. <laughs> Man, you just have it's just a long day. <laughs> he like adjusts his glasses with his hand, uh, his his arms, but in his other arms that are sticking out of his stomach, slide back in and begin to fold the skin. The skin begins to meld back into itself as he lowers his shirt back over his head and he just kind of twists his head around. He says, hey man, it's been a rough day for everybody. You should go home and get some rest. You've been working too hard. Thanks for the help. And he heads back to the car. As you walk away, you can hear him say, I think I need, I think I'm going to lay off the caffeine. Did I, did, did, maybe those, maybe those, those guys on Twitter are right about the, the, and they, they just sort of trail off um, as you sort of walk away. <laughs> And you jump in the car. Pops back into the car. He smiles over it. Would Juniper, Juniper have been says, able to hey. see any of this from behind? He tried to stop well, that, her that's from the saying thing, like, it, Octo. but I don't know if he was successful. Yeah. If, it's, if it was only frontal stuff, then she probably wouldn't have been able to see it. Um, yeah. Although you do, Juniper may have questions about why Octo started taking off his shirt <laughs> with the police officers. Probably not. <laughs> okay, you've seen weirder. And you head over to Adventist Memorial um, Hospital, and um, 
Um, they are um, sort of also in sort of a crazy state as people are being brought in. Like they have a whole area of the hospital that's been locked down to try and um, because they still don't know what's wrong with some people and given these sort of strange wounds that people have taken, non-physical wounds that people have taken. So they think it is some sort of uh, um, biological thing. So they have certain parts of the hospital locked down. Um, and during this confusion, you are able to uh, essentially convince them that you are Mandy's brother. Is, do you use Mandy's brother again? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so during this confusion, things are a bit hectic. They are not quite doing the checks they should be doing to clear family members um, um, for access, but you are sort of led to a room. You're told that she has um, a pretty bad concussion um, and a, uh, some head trauma, um, but that she will be fine. They're just waiting for her to wake up. I guess he would ask. I apologize to anyone with medical it. knowledge. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, he would ask. He would ask Juniper if she wanted to come or wait in the car. Oh no, man! I want to. I don't. I don't want to be alone in the parking lot. I guess. I just. It's been a weird night. Let's. Can I just come? Yeah, please. I, I, I think it'll be easier if you're there. Just, um, you know, it might get weirder <clears throat> still. I don't know. It depends on what kind of mood she's in. But I'd like you to be there. Um, but who? I didn't really hear. Who are we gonna? Who are we here to see? Is it like your? Is it like your, your friend? Like. Oh, well, it's. Yeah, my. It's kind of complicated. Uh, she's sort of like an ex, sort of, but she's really controlling, uh, and she is a sorceress. So, like, you know, she she knows things, you know, like about smoke dogs and all this weird shit going on. And, yeah, she might be able to help you. I think I can get her to help you. Uh, oh, okay, um... Smoke dogs aren't real dogs. Man, I found no. that out tonight. And I guess if she knows about that, then, then yeah, like I, 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 I definitely want to come. I super want to come. I just wish that dog had a name that bit me. You know, I'd feel better. Maybe she knows his name. Maybe you just give him a name. What would you name that dog? He says as he like gets out of the car. Brosco. Brosco. Wow. Is, is that for? Is that like French or? Yeah. No, man. It's German. Oh. Cool. My, well, hey, um, my, you know, my dad was three fourths German. Oh wow! Uh, he he considers briefly trying to explain his genealogy, and then he decides against it and, and just like waits and says, "Well, just you know, stay close. It might be weird in there, but we'll just we'll just head in like we know what's going on, like we belong there. And you know, if anybody says anything, I'll just tell him, hey, you know, we're we're from we're from Hollywood. We're making a movie, so let us pass.'" Yeah, I, God, I wish I had a badge. Joe didn't give me a badge. That's okay. We'll, it's okay. We'll, we'll get there. It's, I got your back, Octo man, man, Octo man. Thanks, Junie. Yeah, I know. Hey, I'll get you a badge tomorrow. I promise. Starts heading. Oh. Out. Thanks, man. All right. Mm. And as I said, you sort of are able to take advantage of the confusion, the state of confusion that things are in right now, um, given the events of the last uh, hour and a half. Um, and you are able to essentially get someone who's frazzled, who's able to tell you where Mandy's room is. Um, and you head that way. And right as you're about to arrive, 
um, you see the door slide open and you see Mandy with sort of like a head bandage, um, sort of in a, in a, in a, uh, patient's gown, um, um, just like slam the door open. Um, and she, t- she sees you. It's like, oh. ah, perfect. Octo, you're here. Uh, I've been looking for you. And now you found me. Just like the good pet you are. <sighs> we need to leave. We need to get out of Los Angeles. We're getting out of Los Angeles. Who is this? Oh, uh, hey, Mandy, this is my friend, Juni. She's really great. Um, and she got bit by a smoke dog. And I want you to, uh, you know, make her better. Hey. Hi, Juni. I'm Mandy. Um, I'm the, Octo's this, owner. This, the smoke dog's name was Roscoe. He was, I think he was German. Oh, cute. Uh, I'm sure you're very nice, as uh, Octo, Octavius here says, um, but I'm going to need you to uh, kindly fuck off. Oh, um. hey, man, that's, that's unkind. Um, if you don't fuck off, uh, it will become unkind. And she reaches over to grab your arm, Octo. We're leaving. He pulls his arm back. And he's strong. Yeah, Uh, I think you're able to pull it out. I'm not going anywhere, Mandy. Not yet. I got a movie to make. I got promises to keep. Why do you want to leave LA? Everything's here, man. It's the center of the world. You love it here. Oh. Octo, she says sort of in this sort of like soft voice as she sort of like draws close to you. Dear, you're being unreasonable now. We're going to leave. You are going to come with me. We're not going to be in LA for whatever is happening here. We're leaving now. You haven't even looked at my friend Juni right now. She needs help. I don't give a fuck. Well, I do, Mandy. I'm sorry, but uh, I... yeah, this is a deal breaker, man. This is a deal breaker. I'm sorry. What did you say? I said, you're going to help my friend right now. Right now, Mandy. That's what I said. I said, you're going to help my friend right now, Mandy. Her arm begins to sort of swing in a motion you are familiar with. Um, as sort of this lasso of light begins to form, what does Octo do? He takes off his shirt. <laughs> okay, you take off your shirt. Is there is there a move here? I'm just trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess that's not technically a move. Um, a basic <laughs> like, I'm just trying to figure out what move. move what move is this associated with? Or is, are you just taking Tom's off your shirt? written in his <laughs> own moves. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> How about... I just, see, I just see this cartoon standoff, and it's like this really, like, intense moment, and then it pans to Octo, and all he does is, like, that anime, just, like, rip off his shirt real quick, and just go back to standing there. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's call this, um, I'm gonna, you know what? Tear it down. That's the move. He's gonna smash through the scenery to get what he wants. Okay. Okay. All right. So. All right. So this is, yeah, this is sort of, so this, so I think, so 
mm, describe to me how this is smashing. Like, what do you do that makes this seem like you're smashing? This feels like, are you pushing Mandy around? What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, I think there's a moment where he like kind of looks over his shoulder back to Juni, and he says, "Hey, I'm sorry about this." And then he rips off his shirt, and as he does, like six more arms break out of his abdomen, arms of the various parts of the dead men and women <clears throat> that make make up him, that are inside of him still. These parts of them are as they break through. He's like overturning tables with some of the arms, and he's trying to grab Mandy before she can cast a spell, before she can do anything to control him again. And he wants to like pick her up and slam her into the ceiling, like into the ground. Like he wants her to feel the lack of control that he has felt for so many years. And he is using all of his arms to do that. All right, roll with blood, I believe, right? Yeah. All right. A nine. A nine. So you Juniper, smash you move can this help with this scene. Oh, yeah. You could help in this moment. You could help or hinder. If you succeed, you can give him a plus one. You're muted. I'm so distressed. I forgot where my buttons were. I want to help. Okay. How do you help? What would you, as you see Octo sort of say, and you see this woman who's been treating Octo terribly, treating you terribly, and Octo apologizing for what he's about to do, um, what do you do to help him? Uh, well, I mean, she doesn't have any extra arms in her abdomen. No. No. <laughs> Is there it can be narratively, could... what do you do? Yeah, like, could I, like, try to, like, step in and, like, encourage Octoman and be like, I don't... I would say that there is enough of a relation, like, I mean, I would say that, that based on Octo's um, sort of relationship with Juniper, based on Octo's mindset, I mean, you know, encouragement from Juniper would work in this situation. It wouldn't work for everyone, like, this isn't bardic inspiration, but I think we have established yeah. sort of how Octo feels in regards to, to sort of like, like, the like yeah. Juniper's character in terms of protecting her. So I think that all right. seeing all of this happen, I would just be like, oh, hell, hell yeah, man. She, she's super unkind. And like, just all trying right. to be unkind. Um, what do you want me to roll? I don't even know how to fight. Roll. So basically you are going to roll um, with Octo's faction, which is wild. So just go to one of your faction moves and make sure the drop down box is set to wild. It should be in the center of your character sheet, cent okay. lower center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just make sure it's set to wild and then roll any of them. This okay. would be a lend a hand. Oh, unless there's lend a look. hand on there, I can't remember. Yeah, it does, it does, it does. Right, partial, partial success. Oh. On a seven to nine, you do get to give, so would you like to give him a plus one on his roll? I want to give him a plus 100 on his roll, but I'll give him that one. All right. All right. So luckily this brings it up to a 10. Um, you do expose yourself to any danger, entanglement, or cost that may happen as this. Um, so Octo, you do have a ostensibly a 10 here. Okay. So uh, you smash through the scenery to get what you want. Uh, I get what I want. That's it on a 10 plus. I smash through obstacles and get what I want. And what Octo what does wants this look like? To, uh, yeah, so he he tears off his shirt, the arms break out, and as she's like whipping this energy lasso around, he lunges for her. He knocks uh, 
side table, like a cot on the side of the hallway into her legs. So she trips mm-hmm. over it and then he grabs her under her arms with two of his arms. He grabs two of her legs with two of his other arms and then her hair and the back of her foot with his other two arms and he's still got two more arms and he slams her up into the ceiling and he slams her down into the ground. He holds her neck. He holds her back. He holds her arms so she can't use her lasso. And this is what, this is what he's trying to do unless she breaks away. Uh, and she can't cast spells and he leans down and pulls her head back. And he just says, you're going to fix my friend. And then you're going to tell me what's going on, Mandy. And then if you want to leave LA, you can fucking leave LA for all I care. She is stunned, both physically and just mentally, to see you, who she has kept sort of that, like, to see you break your leash, essentially, metaphorically here, um, has her stunned. Um, and she just. You see her, um, you see her purse, um, sort of on her, her the, like she had grabbed her, per, like her purse had been like probably in her room, um, and she has it and it's sort of like dropped to the ground. And I think she's too stunned to do anything, but you know that she keeps a number of, you know, accoutrement things to help her in her little purse. Um, a number of vials, number of potions, number of other things, um, and your best bet for some way to help Juniper is probably in that bag. And she's just she's just stunned right now. Okay. He'll, uh, he can't make eye contact with Juni because he's so embarrassed at the moment um, for her to see him like this. But he does mm-hmm. like more gently kind of call up to her. Hey, Juni, grab her bag. I think there's something in there that'll help you. I just grab it and head back to the car. I'll be with you soon. Uh, okay, 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 I'll go in. Uh, so I'll, I'll grab her bag and I'll start to run out of the room and be like, oh, sh- that probably looks like super suspicious. And then I'll just like quickly walk. All right, and again, it's chaotic here, so no one's really paying you too much attention. Um, and mm-hmm. you're able to head back to the car. An octo. Mandy is s- probably st- like looks so unsure of herself for the first time that you've ever seen her. But, 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 you're, you're mine, octo. You're mine. We were all yours, Mandy. We all loved you. Every single one of us loved you. That didn't make it right. And now it's time that we get to live our lives free of you. And even now, I ain't gonna hurt you. I just want you to go. And I want you to tell me before you go what's happening to LA. Because maybe this ain't your city anymore. This is our city. We died here. We were reborn here. And now we're together here. I'm not gonna abandon it. You've, you've got to leave. We've got to leave, Octo. Someone's tearing. Someone's tearing a hole between our world and the afterlife. And it's not gonna be pretty when it happens. We've got to leave. If there's any love for me left in any of you, we've got to leave. Who is doing it, Mandy? 
Who was tearing that I hole? I don't... I don't know. If I did, I'd deal with them. You... You have to... She sort of looks at you with sort of... No, oh, go ahead. Yeah, she like turns around. He loosens his grip just enough so that they can make eye contact just barely, but he's still holding, like he's still controlling this situation. Did you ever love us at all? I mean, at all. If you lie to me, if you lie to us, we'll know. I loved all of you. That's why I made you. And you gotta get out of here and save yourself. And he tries to knock her out. I'm gonna say that you can, straight up at this point. Like you, you're you're with the ten on your smash through the scene. Um, you can knock her out. She's got. A, she's already got a concussion. It's not hard to give her another one right now. And you walk away. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. As soon as he knocks her out, he just uh, puts back on his glasses and kind of brushes his hair out of his face. He's feeling extremely confused. And part of him almost agreed to leave just now. Um, but then he remembers Junie's in the car and they've got a movie to shoot. And even though he doesn't know a lot more about what's going on, he has no reason not to believe her when she says that somebody's trying to tear a hole between the earth and the underworld. And he's got to get back to his friends. As you walk away, that feeling that you've had sort of in the back of your, almost it feels like it's been in the back of your head for a couple weeks now. That feeling knowing that there were spirits out there that wanted your death seems to calm almost as if some form of maybe not peace, but understanding or at the very least acceptance for some of those spirits <sighs> in the car juniper you have mandy's little handbag octo said there was something in there that would help you you look um no, I wait for Octo to come to the car before I rifle through this handbag. Okay. Octo arrives a few minutes later. I think he's probably wearing a, you know, like a hospital gown that he took because he tore his shirt. So like he takes one yeah. as he passes by, one that he sees, and like he, as soon as he's outside, he like puts it on, probably looks really tight on him, and gets into the car. Yeah. Oh. Oh, hey, hey Judy. I, you okay? I, I took, I took your friend's bag. Is she gonna be like more mad at you? Like, I can go put sure. it back. Nah, don't worry about her. She can't hurt me anymore. Let me see here. Opens the bag up to take a look inside. All right, there are a number of vials and potions in there. You recognize one that is one that is generally used for healing. takes it out and gives it a little shake and he says yeah this is gonna taste really bad i'm sorry about that uh but i i am I, i'm not a doctor you know not officially or anything i don't have a license but this should help you offers it over but you, you could play one on tv <laughs> well, I uh, yeah That'd be do you cool, drink huh? it 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll like shake it up and look at it, but I'll drink it. Right. As you drink it, you feel it's almost like drinking a strong alcohol. It burns in your throat. You feel that burning sensation move down your arm and that cold, numb sensation begins to go away. But then you also feel it begin, this burning sensation begin to rise up through your neck and into your head. And you begin to get this almost painful headache. And memories begin to start flashing through your head. Memories that you've forgotten. Memories that you just don't even remember you ever had. You have this memory of the car crash of your passenger at the time who was called Octo Man. <laughs> you remember the things that led to the car crash, seemingly perhaps caused by Octo. You remember the memories you've been getting back of the car crash, of the person pulling themselves off. And this time as they turn away and you see the firelight sort of silhouetting them, you get the faintest flicker. But that was Auden in the other car. Flash forward, you have another memory of a woman a businesswoman um, who got very drunk at your bar one night that you were bartending at. And she mentions having done something that was necessary to make her protege reach their full potential. You remember her name was Ursula? You didn't catch a last name. Uh, with you now all remember these memories. her exactly what she said. She said that she had killed someone. Make sure her protege would become who she needed her to be. And it hurts bringing these memories back. We're going to jump over to Eden Tower. <laughs> I'm just driving the car. I think I, I think I would just get in. I don't know if Auden sat next to me or in the back, but I'm just I'm driving because I know how to get to Eden Tower. So I think that's kind of my only priority at the moment. I imagine I do check my uh, phone. Cassie has pulled up right out front. And she's done it in a really obnoxious way, pulled onto the concrete. I imagine Eden Core is a building with like a fountain in front of it. And she's just gone up onto the concrete and she is honking her horn and waving Ida to come on through with her and just pretending like this is legit and this is okay and this is acceptable. Uh, because I know that Auden would kill me where I stand if I did that to his car. I just pull up nice and neat on the curb. I shut the car off. I open the window, throw the keys back towards him and just get out of the car. Then I, I will follow get up out. to Cassie. Yeah, I get out. I head straight inside. No messing about or anything. Well... Um, you meet here. wherever, whatever room. Yeah. Um, I will head in, go up to my um, 
this isn't where I live. This isn't a place that we've been to before. This is uh, uh, Eden Tower, which is mm. largest skyscraper in all of LA. Um, and uh, I will buzz us up to the 70th floor, um, which is as, actually as high as the elevator goes. Um, but it does not take us anywhere near the penthouse. And uh, we come out. I will head straight over to my um, phone and uh, check to see if uh, phone lines are up. If there's any issues. Um, so you check the... Oh, okay. Can you repeat that one more time? Sorry. I'm just checking that you the check, uh, uh, like phone phone lines are still on. Phone lines are still on. Then I will uh, call whoever I have um, medically who will be able to assist. Did you kill the doctor, Josh? Do you remember? Was he the one that you had killed, or is he the one that like owes you a favor? What? I didn't kill anyone. Charlie, I've never killed anyone. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never killed about. anyone a day in my life. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I was just messing so, trying right. to remember. Because there was a right. doctor scene, right? Uh, yeah, there was a doctor scene, yeah. God, where do you get this stuff from? No wonder you don't trust me. You're just misremembering, like, all this horrible <laughs> thing you think I've done. <laughs> so, yeah. the microphone. I am... Um, I'm going to yeah call whoever uh, like uh, whoever it is I have on yeah. hand to take care of this sort yeah. of thing, and uh, I'd like to use my new thing that I can do once we're up in mm-hmm. the office and away from prying eyes. <clears throat> All right, yeah, um, roll, let it out. Okay. Yeah. It is. Let it out, I believe. Let it out. Uh, That's an 11. That is an 11. All right. So um, you can choose, you can, uh, you get to choose one from the list, and then you can either ignore corruption or choose another from a list, from the list, and mark corruption. Can I choose? I know. Can I choose one? uh, Can I choose the same one twice, or does it have to be? Um. I'll allow it in this case, in this specific case. I'll allow you to take this one twice, since I don't think you have any other um, intent other than this one at the moment. Um, yeah, no, like not at the moment. Option. I will do. Okay, then I'll allow you to take that same option twice. So what does this look okay. like? Um, and what so, is the move? So Auden, Auden goes over to like a uh, what looks like a wall. Like just a wall panel, and uh, he reaches into his wallet, pulls out a thin card that has no like markings whatsoever. It's clear plastic with like circuitry running through it. Uh, he takes it out, slides it into the wall. There is a click, and a panel moves out of the way. And on the other side, there is a small collection of simple things like uh, like firearms and and stuff. But mostly, there's like a a, a row of suits and he just begins to undress uh he will strip down to pretty much just his uh his skivvies and um take a look at his arm and he's sort of standing beside his desk and there's like this black like striations of darkness like running through the veins in his arm that went through the dog <laughs> and he takes a moment and he's going to walk over to uh the desk uh like actually you know he goes over to the conference table where there is a bunch of like there's the big jug with like water and a load of cups and it's not currently in use and he'll take that he'll pour all the water out onto the floor and then he holds his arm over the top of it and he just concentrates and his fingernails start to go black and then one by one all of them will make a slight clatter as they all fall off and land as from where his nail beds are there's now like weeping black pus and uh, as he starts to bleed what looks like black ichor from his fingertips and it drips down into this jug, he's keeping it Um, the striations of darkness in his veins start to fade ever so slightly, they all start to drain downwards and by the time he <clears throat> wrenches his hand free, 
he flicks his hand a couple of times and like the like ichor like tar like substance hardens into black fingernails where his fingernails were and his hand returns to mostly normal looking except he has sort of like this interesting spider web pattern of darkness on the back of his veins <sighs> And he kind of looks down at the jar of, like, whatever that was. Is there anything I could do with that, Tommy, or is that just... It's... it's just... Ugh. Yeah, it's just, I, I walk mm, over to the waste point. disposal, I, I pour it into the garburator, wait, and I just wait, click wait, the button. Wait. Is there anything I could do with it, Ooh. Tommy? Um, do you have an ability that lets you do something with I, it? I have, uh, I don't know if it would tell me anything, but I have, uh, psychometry. Whenever you study or examine an interesting object, roll with spirit, and then I can ask questions. Okay, yeah, why tell don't me. you try? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I run over before Auden, like, throws it in the garbage, mm. and I, like, scoop it up like the, the container oh no no it's going down the sink it. like oh, it, like okay. in well, the sink like, like, like the trash compactor but as you like come over i'm like yes could you not pour all of that out could i see it for a minute just so you know what's left of me in there is long since dead so no i don't I want it, it because of you okay and as soon as i touch it uh, Auden, you see a very familiar, my eyes go entirely white, or black, my hair goes entirely white, and I would like to do the psychometry, see if I can right. see well, anything about where this came from. Cool. Um, let me bring up the right page. Okay. Uh, where is it? It says just roll with spirit, so should I just roll, like, anything with spirit? Uh, yeah, just roll like anything a, with like spirit. A normal move? We'll just, oh. Yeah, just a normal. Okay, then. Uh, so on a 10 plus, I get to ask three questions. Um, the question's just for everybody else. I can either ask, what is the history of this object? What bands, wards, or limits are attached to this object? Where does this object belong? What secrets or mysteries has this object been privy to? And what strong emotions have the most re have most recently uh, been near this object? First question is what bands, wards, or limits are attached to this object? Um, what band? Um, I mean, there's I'm trying, none so the really so- all of these questions Sorry, mm -hmm. the purpose of all of my questions are to, to discern who unleashed, like who or what these came from. Like not the plane, but rather the the magical arcane-ish entity, if pop, if that's what it is. Yeah, so bands, wards, or limits. So <laughs> there weren't really, so this is sort of like, this is essence of like damned souls. Um so i mean there aren't really there aren't really bands wards or limits attached to this um and so that is fine they're, they're I just, just, it was just a question i wanted yeah. to ask <laughs> yeah. yeah uh my second one is what secrets or mysteries has this object been privy to oh boy okay so secrets or mysteries that this object has been privy to um this object comes from sort of the spirit of a damned soul and thus um, has been very privy to the secrets of the afterlife and perhaps what it is actually about because there is some debate about what happens um, and thus sort of like you know what it, it's privy to the secrets of like the afterlife um, which are questions that you know uh, people still ask exactly what happens. Okay. Um, 
I think my last question would be then, what is the history of this object as far back as I can see and or sense? Okay, so what you're going to get from this is that this was a soul that a very old soul um they were um they've been in whatever the afterlife sort of hell is um there for a couple hundred years what you're gonna get is that these beings they aren't specifically tied to any one in particular beyond you know being demonic in a way being tied to some sort of demonic entity um, in the afterlife and that what you definitely get is that these these what these creatures are what what's happening isn't necessarily directly being influenced by whoever might be doing the murders it just might it might be a occurrence of the murders if that makes sense like they're not being directed by this person they that are they're just ton. simply an event that happens um this veil is torn it's at this point that cassie auden ida and joe you all get phone calls Let's start with Joe. Yeah. Where are, where am I? Am are we are we up in the building or are we still in the car? Yeah, you're up in Eden Tower right now. Oh, okay. I'm like talking Cassie's ear off. There's just we could be shut up outside about. if you'd prefer, though. Trav, I don't mind. We're like walking up to the. Can we be walking up? Yeah, I imagine like Odin um, and Ida went like ahead, and we'll follow up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So anyway, it's me and Brian Dennehy and Polly Shore and that kid who was in uh, Can't Hardly Wait or or Empire Records or whatever. They were all sleeping on my couch. Phone starts going off. We were writing. A, we were writing a screenplay. Hang on one second. Rebain Productions. Hi. Uh, is this this is Joe Rebain that I'm talking to? Uh, yes. Yeah, speaking. Go for Joe Rebain. Hi. Yes. Uh. Uh, I'm from, uh, this is, uh, my name is Eloise uh, Lancaster. I'm from the, uh, um, the Sun Daily. Um, I'd love to have some time to interview you about your supposed supernatural, uh, investigator you've hired for your, your production. Um, and as we do that, let's jump over to Cassie on her phone call. Hi. Uh, 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 hi. Cass, uh, yes, uh, so this is, you see the caller ID is Nathan um, Hochelle. Oh. And it's been probably about three or four hours since you talked to him earlier in the day. Uh, Cassie, okay? uh, so, yeah, so I reached out to some of my contacts. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I've found uh, at least a lead on the location you were looking for up north. Um, there's a warehouse. Uh, up, uh, warehouse? Yeah, there's uh, a warehouse up in uh, uh, near Willow Springs Raceway. Willow, um, okay. Uh, who told you? Like, okay. Today has been crazy. I mean, Willow Springs? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, one of my contacts, obviously, I can't reveal their names yeah, no, for I, I understand. security uh, reasons. So there was an incident over at West Covina. Uh, Another murder. Uh, it seems like mm. some kind of conspiracy, something to do with maybe I don't know witches or something. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. But while we were there, there um, was that earthquake, and uh, out of the ground, we had uh, smoke dogs. Uh, there were definitely yeah. I had to deal with a couple of those. And... Well, I just needed to know On that my. my my plate is probably being run by about, well, I guess any of the free officers right now. The entire street was watching a lot of crazy stuff go down, and my car was idling there a while. So um, uh, I'm going to see if I can get a change of vehicle, and then I will head on up to Willow Springs. 
All right. Uh, I'll meet you up there. Um, you could probably use some backup. This seems to be a lot bigger than, well, a single person's job. Oh, uh, thank you, Nathan. Is there anything else I, I need to know about this place? Mm, that's about it, as far as I'm aware. It's some sort of warehouse up there. I mean, that's in line with what we were expecting, so good. Uh, well, right now I'm at mm. Eden Core, but uh, meet you out there, I don't know, like four hours, maybe? You know, it would probably. All right, I'll see you there. All right, all right, thank you, Nathan. Joe, who Jumping you on the over phone to Ida. To? Jumping over to Ida, your phone goes off. You see it's Ursula. Uh, well, finally you decide to call. My office. Ten minutes. We need to talk. I will be over there as soon as I possibly can be then. And I just immediately hang up. Auden, it's your phone. It's Hector, your uh, man. Speak. Uh, so, boss, we've uh, we've got another body. I'm waiting. Uh, same MO. Some, uh... <sighs> some, uh... Old school... Some old school actress. And he gives you the address. And then you all begin to feel the strongest earthquake you've felt yet. We're going to jump over to Juniper real quick to wrap. How do you feel after those memories come back, Juniper? All right, there's a tiny memory that just was Been talking there. in my head. Um, I think that Juniper gets the memories and she just like takes her headband off and kind of like puts her head in her hands like, hey, hey Octo, do you mind if I drive again? Like, could you just like, like just get out and I can and just take over, like. Um, the, you you want me to get out of the car? Yeah, like I just um, I just got a an alert on my phone. Um, someone needs a ride, and I like I could really use I could really use that money. So like, do you mind if we could just like pull over and like you could just get out and I'll take over driving and you could like in the next seat or something. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, Junie, can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah, what's, what's up? Do you think that all of the shitty things we do in our lives we can never do enough good that it sort of eclipses things we've done wrong makes up for it makes it makes it okay I guess it just depends on how big the sun is that you're 
trying to blot out with good deeds or donuts or whatever. You think um, maybe there's a chance you might forgive me one day? Maybe. I mean, Octo Man, Octo Man. I just hope I'm going to remember this tomorrow so I can make that decision. I hope, uh, I hope you do too. And whatever you decide, it'll be what's right. He gets out of the car so he can exchange seats with her. All right. And you drive off. And that's where I think we're going to wrap today. We have to wrap real quick here. Um, I think, but, uh, that was an epic, epic session, y'all. There was, oh boy, a lot happened. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Um, I don't know if we have John. I think it's the tech gremlins grabbed him again. Um, let's, uh, do real quick outros. Uh, uh, Lydia, thank you so much. Thank you. Tommy. Oh. Oh, thank you. oh and there's a uh, thank you for screen kitties. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to be here next week. So this is my last game. But uh, as always, I love playing with this group. Um, that was a great ending that was so sad. And uh, I feel bad because Juniper is so mad at Octoman. But Lydia is still really good friends with Don. Um, so I would like, <laughs> I would like to gift him all of my, all of my twankies, which are also known as twenties or crits, which Don just learned in chat. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Um, oh, okay. um, and we will be, uh, sad to not have you here, but, uh, um, uh, thank you so much for bringing Juniper Perry to life for us. Um, really Thank you loved again her. for having me. This was so much fun. I'm so sorry mm -hmm. I was in and out this season. It's been a crazy, like, I don't even know how many years has passed since we started this game, but it's been at least 20. <laughs> so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. All right. And uh, Charlie. Gosh, darn it. I was really hoping you'd come to me last. Uh, this session oh. <laughs> was really uh, great. Um, I have loved the strange conversations these people have. Uh, the, the master story is like intense and huge and political and wild, but I really just love these people talking to each other. There's something about that that makes it really real. And I have just really loved it. And I think Octo has had the best arc all season and I cannot wait to see what the last piece of this puzzle is going to be for everyone. I am so excited for next week. I appreciate everyone who's been in chat tonight uh, supporting us and hanging out. Thank you so much to Virginia for those donated additional crits. We will get this movie made. Uh, we might just have to find a way of hitting reset on the world, which I'm sure a lot of people would like for real life. But luckily here we get to hang out in a fictional world. And uh, I still have hope that we can save LA from the disaster that is coming for it. Um, but I'm going to hand off right now. I'll come and say a last thing before we go offline. But I'm going to hand off right now to my very good friend, producer Trav, so that he can do his outro. Uh, man, uh, Don runs away with it. Uh, just to, you got body horror and tragedy and and just really brought the thunder and uh, I love this group I've yes and and Lydia's absolutely right the last 10 months or so has felt like 20 years and we're all war buddies at this point which is which is my favorite thing in the whole world that's like making movies is you all come out the other side uh, brothers and sisters and so hello I'm producer Trav listen I'm gonna I, Lydia turned me into a vampire so I'm gonna uh, be a vampire on Tuesday nights 
on her channel and uh, keep an eye out for lots of crazy stuff like more aliens towards the end of the month. And I love this group. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie's a very busy present. Charlie is amazing past, present and future. Charlie, uh, it has the world on her shoulders. So well done. Applause for Charlie. And we'll see you next week for the sweet souvenir. Awesome. <laughs> and someone we will definitely be seeing next week, Ray. Hey, I'm Ray. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, you can follow me out with a brick almost on every everything I do, every facet of the internet. I'm a variety streamer. Uh, go watch me on my channel because I do cool video game things. Uh, I'm a, I love being a part of this group. And if you want to see me do other tabletop stuff, I actually am in the I Am Pilgrim uh, finale next week on Wednesday. So come watch me play some Cult Divinity Lost. It's a lot of freaking fun. And I love this group. See you next week. All right. Oh, and Dawn. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, Octo today. <laughs> oh, it was so much fun. Uh, and I always have fun. I, I say this to the group all the time. Like, you know, weeks are hard. The year is hard. Everybody's working hard and everybody's dealing with so much shit. So much. Uh, and I know for me, every week that we get to play on Fridays with this group of people, it is just the best feeling. Uh, I look forward to it all the time. And I'm looking forward to the finale tomorrow. I have a lot of uh, a lot of feelings in my heart for all these people. And thank you all in chat for being here. I'm at Jonathan Fry on Twitter. I do other things. I guess I should shout them out. Usually, usually I don't specifically, uh, but I am launching some new shows on the channel that I'm a creative director for, LFM Network. It's LFM underscore network. Uh, you'll see on the 20th and 21st, we're doing a special event. We're doing it with Level Up Dice. So it's actually gonna be on Level Up Dice's channel. Uh, it is Rise of the Veiled Alliance, my Dark Sun D&D &D campaign. And it's sort of like a prologue to twin campaigns that will be starting the following week. So if you like like swords and sandals, uh, weird magic, like, epic fantasy uh it's a really great cast uh and charlie's a part of it too charlie's in in the show that i run so please do come check it out it is excellent and i can't wait to share it with everybody but that's all for me i'm just very happy to be here and to get to spend some time with these people and thank you lydia for the twinkies and for describing what twinkies are for me <laughs> you're welcome ah uh, and <laughs> and uh yeah i mean thank you all for being amazing players and i'm looking forward to next week um as like i'm also gonna keep it sweet and short uh, that was an amazing session uh i am at impaired to pango on the twitter sphere you can find me there um and, and then shows on fridays um you can find me over on saturdays on salty sweet games playing call of cthulhu uh mass of nyarlathotep i think i got it right this time i think i got it right this time um and uh um, that's at 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, things are getting weird and scary over there, as always. Uh, they're getting weird and scary again, is what I'll say. Um, anyways, uh, other than that, uh, check out the Encounter Roleplay Discord and Twitter. Join uh, conversations with the cast, crew, and Chaos Chorus. Um, check out Comment of the Week and GIF Clip of the Week over on the Twitter. Um, I think that's all the end of check out the youtube where you can find all the vods of this if you need to catch up before next week's finale um i think that's all the end of free shout outs yeah, yeah and if you've been watching on youtube thank you so much for staying through the end and listening to our outros leave us a comment down below uh let us know who you love um and let us know with a hashtag that johnny big guns is going down because that's got to happen, right? We've got to get to that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One final thing before we sign off tonight, the Chaos Chorus did get us to 20 retweets, which unlocks a truth that we will introduce into the world. And I said in the retweet goal that it was only going to be one player. But Tommy, what I would like to do is give every player a truth to add to the world for the finale. Um, how do you okay. feel about that? Yeah, I mean, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, and uh, in honor of the finale as well, um, we will be giving away next week a copy of the PDF for the Urban Shadows game, so you too can dive into this politics and supernatural wonder from Magpie Games. That's all from me. There will be no wild and chaotic tonight. 
Uh, so please take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful weekend and come back on Monday when we will be playing the finale of the Crownlands, which is the Game of Thrones campaign that I GM and what a season the Tremains have had. Much love. If you want to chit chat this weekend, please do come and join us over on the Discord. We'll all be there hanging out. Um, so long. Farewell. Keep rolling dice, everybody, and just love each other a little bit more when you can. Good night, everyone. <laughs>